Hello everyone, thank you for joining today. My name is Xavi, I'm the artist of Carla. In this topic, Marcos and I, we are going to speak about visual fidelity and technical aspects that help us to reproduce a more realistic uh, environment. First of all, we will talk about TAN 10, the latest in development, and then uh, we will use to show a comparison between old visuals and new visuals to better appreciate the graphic evolution. In art improvement, we are going to talk uh, talking about visual fidelity. Why is it so important and how we have done it? And after this, um, Marcos will give a brief demonstration on some visual features that can be set by users and explain how to access and manage this uh, from the API. Site filters include the weather parameterization and the lighting of the scene using vehicles uh, and city lights. Finally, we will introduce some of the um, upcoming filters that we are currently working on. As I mentioned it uh, previously, in the latest Carla release 0.9.9, .9, we introduced Town 10. This is by far the more detailed town in Carla so far, and definitely the best place to showcase the substantial uh, progress that we are talking about. In order uh, to address some autonomous driving problems, uh, such uh, as perception, the art team has been pushing to improve the rendering of reality. We understand that it's important to validate data in a simulation that is as close to reality as possible. That is relevant for all types of sensors, but of course cameras. Carla Maps had to step it up and so with Town 10 we decided to bring it to, uh, to another level. The map is divided in kind of neighborhoods that offer a wide variety of environments. All the elements have been placed meticulously and the attention to the toilet has been uh, thrown. We don't not only want Carla to look realistic but also to be as intricate as real life can be. You can enjoy of, of this town download the additional maps on, on GitHub in Carla releases. Here are two pictures of Town 10, but uh, with different qualities. The one on the left represents how would Town 10 uh, look like if released in 0.9.6. The one on the right is how does it actually look like in a 0.9.9 .9 with the uh, exact uh, uh, same conditions and sun position. There is simply much more going and much uh, and much more to to look at. That has been that has been one of our focuses. Uh, we want to make sure uh, that we can create a relevant environment for the training and validation of uh, AD systems. Here is another example, same format as before, two shots of Town 10, on the left the quality of, previ of previous releases and on the right the current uh, state of Carla. This time the shot is taken in a sort of a conventional street with not a lot more happening. The intricate facades are still there, but this time I would like to put uh, the spotlight on, on the ambience. Let's talk about uh, how we have incorporated these uh, changes into Carla. In post-processing, uh, one of the most important is uh, maze distance fields. This provides us for every actor with an estimate surface that acquire a uh, volume texture. Uh, this uh, will help us merge shape actors in the scene. How? 
By combining this feature with distance fields and occlusion, which give us a higher grade range and help us to integrate the elements into the scene. Another post-processing tool added recently is Exponential Hayfog. This, provi this provides um, with a realistic sense of atmosphere, air density and light scattering through the atmosphere media. Last but not least, Screen Space Ambient Occlusion is usually used to create a more natural and realistic look. Regarding scene illumination, all towns have HDRI lighting to illuminate the scene in a more realistic manner. Another point that we have worked are the assets, providing more definition and resolution. Tooling is another part really important for us. In this case, I will show you two tools. The, the first one, BP Procedural Building, is a tool to allow us to generate buildings uh, faster and be more efficient. And the second one is BP Paint Roads, that uh, we can paint roads using the Open Drive information. In this video, uh, you can clearly see the importance of the improvements uh, just mentioned. The combination of mesh distance fields and screen space ambient occlusion help elements merge with their surroundings by creating contextual shadow. And then the HDRI illumination make every color much more real. Here you can see uh, some examples of assets we have made in many assets based on the real life as a reference always without forgetting efficiency all assets have LODs to help uh, the performance this is a video where you can see the VP procedural building works select the, the blueprint and drag it into the scene. The idea behind it is to create a building with a few pieces. It also allows us to configure different uh, parameters such as uh, length, and width, uh, number of floors, uh, doors. Uh, this is uh, ru really useful for us because we win in flexibility and, and speed to design maps. After the that floors, top maze, and last the roof. There is a in a few minutes uh, we have a building. We can also add uh, different meshes for each level, and then the meshes are spawned uh, randomly. This allows us to have a more variety for each building. If you want, you can also add blueprints and set the meshes, lights and other components or even add some behaviors. You can combine meshes with blueprints as well. And well, uh, regarding meshes, uh, one of the things that we have in mind is the efficiency with which all parts of the buildings are instantiated to have a better performance. This is another tool, the last, the last tool, BP Paint Road. I really like it, this BP, because uh, it allows us to paint roads like a canvas using the open drive information. Maybe it's on where to understand better. I'm going to show you a, a quick video. This tool is divided into two parts. The first one, we have a material that will contain the instances of the material the road will be painted with. Select the all roads and after apply this material. And the second one, 
we have the blueprint that with the information of open drive and using some brushes we will mix this material between them you can set the brushes like a size a strange of flash and, and space between brushes and, and jitter The blueprint and rod paint communicate using a uh, render target. This is the key. And this is a texture that for each channel of RGB correspond to an instant set material of paint row. Then you can play with the parameters of each instant set material like rawness, brightness, um, saturation and much more. And in this way uh, we have more control and flexibility uh, on the road and we can give it uh, more detail and realism. You can see the evolution. Once this part is finished, we can add two more layers of details. The first one the layer is the decals. You can spawn randomly along of the road, uh, for example, cracks, oil spots, or tar snakes. And the second layer, as before, you can add the meshes um, wherever you want along along the road. As I said before, um, this tool gives us a lot of control over the road and a lot of detail, getting roads much more uh, realistic. Here are some examples about that. And now let me introduce you to Marcos, who will continue with the technical part. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marcos Delgado. I'm a member of the Corla Art Team, and I'm going to show you how can you modify the lights and the weather condition in your scene. First of all, we made this script as a showcase to control all the parameters we need. Let's start by changing the sun altitude. As you can see now, the sun is low. If we change the azimuth as well, let's say 170 degrees, now the sun is in front of us. If we change the altitude to a negative value, we enter the night mode. We can also set the amount of clouds. Those values are percentages. We can also add some rain particles. We can set the wetness of the pavement. And we can also add some puddles into the scene. Finally, we can also tweak the wind intensity. That affects the raindrop direction as well as the tree leaves and the cl clouds movement. To make it easier, we established some presets so you know how to be changing all these parameters individually. Now let's head up to the lights. First, let me get back to the night mode. Okay, I'm going to turn off all the lights. We separate the lights in this scene in different groups. Let's select the group building and turn on the lights. As you can see, all the windows have their own lights. If we change the building group to the street group, it will turn on the street lights. We can also change the intensity of those lights. Let's exaggerate a little bit by 500,000 lumens. We can also change the color of those lights to any RGB values, let's say red. Okay, let's get back to our more realistic values and allow me to spawn some vehicles. I'm using the spawn NPC script for that. Okay, once you have vehicles on your scene, you can also set the lights of those cars. Let's select the position lights and the low beam. There you go. We can also set the highlights, the blinkers, the brake lights, even special lights such as the police sirens. So far, those are the parameters we have control of. We are working to develop more weather conditions and improve the ones we already have. Next, I'm going to explain in more detail how can you customize your own script to control the parameters I have shown. First of all, we have the vehicle lights. The vehicle lights are represented as a bit mask where each bit represents a light of the car. Vehicle light state is the alias of each bit. 
These are the setup of lights that are available in a car, except for a special 1 and 2 that are bits reserved for specific lights in a particular vehicle, such as the police sirens, and not all the cars have them. The lights of a vehicle can be retrieved and updated anytime using the methods Carla Vehicle Get Light State and Carla Vehicle Set Light State. These use binary operations to customize the light settings. The way that it works is first getting the lights you want to turn on. In this example, we select the position on the low beam. And after that, we set the new light state. The ones that you don't set will be turned off. Now we are going to the rest of the lights in the scene. Carla Light Manager is the class responsible to control all the lights in the scene, except light like vehicles that I just explained. It. This class provides access to Carla Light and Carla Light groups, which I'm going to explain in a minute. First, Carla Light is a class created to obtain each light from the scene. Each one has a unique ID and location, so we can locate a light and then set their Carla Light state. What is Carla Light state? Well, for every light there are some specific variables that can be set individually. However, the Carla Light state summarizes all of this and is the best way to change all the attributes in one single code. Those attributes are active, which is a boolean that it means when it's true the light is on. Intensity that it's measured in lumens, color it's measured in RGB values, and group that is the group that the light belongs to. Those groups are created by Carla Light Group. Carla Light Group is a class that categorizes the lights on the scene into different groups. These groups available are provided as an enum values that can be used as flags. Those are the currently groups that we made. Now we have some examples of how to use the Carla Light Manager. First of all, we get the light manager from the world, we select all the lights, and then we turn on and off. In this second example, the same thing. The light manager from the world, we select all the lights, but in this case we filter by the group street. And then we set the colors of those lights. In this third example, we get the light manager from the world, select all the lights, but in this case we select an, a unique ID. We set the intensity of this particular light. In this last example, light manager from the wall, select all the light, but in this case we have a range of different IDs. That means that from the 1000 ID to 2000 ID, we're changing the group to light group other. Here's a few interesting functions we can use in Python for the light manager. As an example, we can filter the lights that are on and also filter the lights that belong to the group street. That means we can accumulate different filters. We can set the light parameters all at once, we don't need to be specifying each parameter individually. And we can also set a list of different values of the same attribute for different lights in one call. In this example we made a list of intensities, but we can make a list of light groups or light states. Finally, these are the upcoming features we are working on. We are working to integrate the vehicle lights in the light manager, so we will have all the, thi all the lights in a single class. We want to be able to create your own light groups in Python, so you can group the lights as you need. Separate the street lights by streets, the buildings by camera distance or as you need. We are also working on implementing the new Sky Atmosphere feature that Unreal Engine has released in the 424 version. With that, we now have control of the particle density in the air and we can simulate in a more realistic way how the light travels through our atmosphere. This allows us to have more realistic light behaviors and achieve a more photorealistic environment. We are currently working on that and we have very good results so far. It will be fully implemented soon. We are waiting for the new release of Unreal Engine 426 where we will have volumetric clouds that will fully interact with the sunlight. That is a huge improvement for clouds. A few days ago Epic showed a technical demo of Unreal Engine 5 where it will change our perception of how engines render in real time. We will have dynamic global illumination and real-time ray tracing. We are eager to implement this new technology in Carla. We will keep a close eye on its development. Finally, we are also working on improving our pedestrians to make them look more realistic. On this topic, my colleagues Daniel Navas and Bernard Pina are going to explain it further in the next presentation. Thank you all for listening.